in Sanskrit logic, whenever a particular point has to be driven home, they do it both by the positive method and by the negative method. Till now the poet has told us about the greatness of devotion and how to get devotion. As a part of that process of sadhana, he is now telling us what we should not do, though the words he has used actually applies to him. Madraksham kshina punyan kshanam api bhavato bhakti hinan padabje Mashrausham shravya bandham tavacharitam apasyanyada kyana jatam Masmarsham madhavatvam api bhuvanapati Chetasa apanhuanan Mabhuvantat saparya vyatikararahito janma janmantarepi Fifteenth shloka He Madhava Bhavata padabje bhakti hinan Kshina punyan kshanam api madraksham Shravya bandham tava charitam apasya Anyat akhyana jatam ma shravsham He bhuvanapate tvam chetasa api apanhuanan ma smarsham Janma janmantare api tvat saparya vyatikara rahitaha ma bhuvam we can say that this is a Bhishma Pratigna, a terrible, terrific vow he is taking now. As I told you in the beginning, you have both the positive mode and method of sadhana and also the negative mode. Both are necessary. Now one may ask, why? Is it not enough if we adopt the positive method? No. The samskaras of previous lives are so strong, very often in spite of our best efforts at self-purification, they can just delude us at any time. Later on in one of the shlokas, he uses the word gajasnana, the bath taken by an elephant. An elephant is supposed to be given a good bath by the Mahut. As soon as the Mahut brings it back and it is left to himself, it will start pouring the dust all over its own body. It will make itself dirty once again. That is the nature of the elephant. So in Sanskrit, gajasnana means a useless bath. A bath that is given to an elephant is, go is not going to keep it clean. Perhaps it, it feels that it has become very clean and it must become comparatively more dirty because of that. So this is because of the samskara or tendency. Such a tendency is in every one of us. Of course, it varies from person to person. According to our Puranas, when Punya Karma is much more, you go to heaven, enjoy the good things of life there and come back. If Papa Karma is more, you go to hell, Naraka, and then come back. When Punya and Papa are more or less equally balanced, we take the birth of a human being here. And the tendency towards evil or good is in everybody. One of our elders 
Revered Ateshwanji Maharaj once used to say, once told us in connection with the, some person slipping from the path of spiritual life, he said with great sorrow in his heart, well, such tendencies are in everybody. We should discover that they are there and take all precautions to overcome them. So this shows that these tendencies are there in us and we have to take preventive measures. And the best preventive measure that a bhakta sadhaka can take is satsanga. So the necessity of satsanga is very much mentioned here, stressed here, but in a negative way. Let me not do that, let me not see that, let me not hear that, and so on. In the Narada Bhakti Sutras, there is the famous statement, Dussangaha Sarvathaiva Tyajyaha. Dussanga, company of evil people, has to be given up. Sarvatha eva. In all respects, no compromise with evil. Here, in this shloka, there is reference to the Jnanendriyas, the five organs of senses, for organs of knowledge, then the mind, then the five karmendriyas or organs of action. All these things are referred to and the poet wants them not to be engaged in the wrong way but to be engaged in the right way. Now let us take these words one by one and see what they mean. <coughs> Madraksham, let me not see. Let me not see whom bhavata padabje bhakti hinan kshina punyan. Those who have no devotion to your holy lotus feet, those who are devoid of punya or merit, let me not even look at them, let me not see them. Here is an interesting question. He calls them as kshina punyas. Punya is religious merit. Those in whom the religious merit has been completely exhausted, they don't have any punya in them. And because of that, because they are kshina punya, are they bhakti hina without devotion? Or because they don't have devotion, have they become kshina punya? This is the question. But actually the two are interrelated. It could be both. People have exhausted their punya. They have done a lot of religious deeds in their previous lives. And those good deeds have started giving good fruits in this life. They are engaged in the good things of life, enjoying the good things of life and gradually the punya karma gets exhausted. Once the punya karma gets exhausted, the papa karmas will start giving their fruits. There is a long and very detailed discussion about punarjanma karma and punarjanma in the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali. Very interesting discussion is there. Anyhow, Kshina Punyan means those who have exhausted their Punya Karmas and as a result of that the evil tendencies are coming into their minds. As a result of that they have lost all faith and devotion in the Lord. As a result of that they start doing evil things. The other thing is also true, they have no devotion to the Lord. Devotion is like an armor which protects us against evils in life. Since there is no devotion, you can't get the Lord's grace, no and it shall be opened, the Bible says. So if there is devotion, if you pray, then the Lord will respond. If you don't pray, the Lord will keep quiet. All right, let the time come, let the fellow feel the need for me, then he will turn towards me. We have a saying in Kannada, Sankata Bandhaga, when Katramana, when Sankata comes, we look at 
we pray to the Lord. And in the Bhagavatam also in one place the Lord says, if I want to show my grace upon anybody, tasya vittam haram yaham, I first take away his wealth. Once the wealth goes, the, per, the person turns towards his friends and relatives, seeking their help and cooperation. Then the Lord says, He will take away the friends and relatives. They are antagonized. They become His enemies. Then helplessly He will turn towards the Lord. It's a wonderful way of showing the grace. Of course, we cannot appreciate it very easily because it hurts us. But ultimately it shows that if we want God and God alone and nothing else in life, God's grace will definitely come. So, Madraksham Bhavata Padabje Bhakti Hinan Kshina Punyan. Those who have no devotion to your holy lotus feet, those who have exhausted all good deeds in their life, those who are inclined towards evil, let me not even look at them. Now why? Why should we not look at them? What will happen if we look at them? Well, out of the pancha jnanendriyas, the five organs of knowledge, the eyes are very, very powerful. When you look at a thing, good or bad, it makes a tremendous impression on the mind. One example. Now we had the TV serial on the Ramayana. When it first started coming, it practically created a revolution in our country. I still remember we had a small black and white set in Allahabad. In Sunday morning at least 30 to 40 people would gather there to see the serial. And there were many interesting stories which were appearing in the newspapers regarding the serial. Bharat Nilop scene had been shown after two or three days there is a very interesting item in the Northern India Patrika, Amrit Bazar Patrikas, replica in, in the Uttar Pradesh. So two brothers, they were fighting for property for over seven years in the High Court. And after seeing this film, there was a rapprochement between them. And one Muslim lady was there, she was a maid servant working in somebody's house. Sunday morning she would be missing. Then one day the master of the house took her to task. We will dismiss you if you don't come. She said, you can dismiss. I'm going to see the Ramayana serial. If you want, you can dismiss me. She was bold enough to say that. So all these things show what a tremendous effect the TV serial on the Ramayana created or had upon the people who were seeing it. So here is a lesson for us. Now, today, technology, photography and allied sciences have improved to such an extent it is easily possible for us to get the best out of them and elevate the society. On the other hand, our people are misusing this and as a result of that misuse and abuse, society is going down much more quickly than it would have gone in the normal course. So, we find that the effect of seeing is so strong, so great, that the poet is advising us not even to look at the faces of those people who have no devotion to the Lord. So, Chakshur Indriya is very powerful. And the samskara, impression created by the Chakshur Indriya is also very strong. So if we are constantly seeing or mixing with people who have no devotion, gradually their tendencies can come to us. Swami Vekanda says in one place, the principle of resonance, which is a principle in physics, 
applies to the psychological field also. If ten people are sitting in one place, if eight of them are good and two of them are bad, the bad tendencies of those two bad people will be kept under check by the good vibrations of the other eight people. The reverse is also true. The problem is many times people who may be kshina punyas and bhakti hinas, they may look like perfect gentlemen, cultured, educated and so on. So that is where the shoe pinches. But any sensitive mind can easily understand by being in the company of such people if there are bad vibrations from them automatically we feel. A person comes with a very broad smile, speaks very nicely, but our heart tells no, he is not sincere. But sometimes we find very simple people, ordinary simple people, but as soon as they come and talk to us, we feel he is genuine, he is serious, he is sincere. So very often a purified heart, heart purified by spiritual discipline, can automatically feel the character and the quality of the other persons. So we should not be carried away by the external appearance. If we know, or even if we do not know, by feeling the vibrations, we should keep ourselves away from such people. Then comes the second, second word, Mashrausham, let me not listen to, let me not hear. Why? Again, samskara. A samskara can be created by listening to the wrong things at the wrong time and the wrong place. You know, there was one General Goebbels in Germany, assistant to Hitler. His theory was, if you repeat a lie one hundred times, it is taken as truth by the people. It's a fact, every now and then, day and night, if it is being dimmed into years, years, a particular idea, automatically it gets into our mind very deeply. So, Mahasrausham, he says, don't listen to what it is he will tell later. Anya vacho vimunchatha amritasya esh setuhu. Mundaka Upanishad tells us, Give up all other talk, all vain talk, talk which is unconnected with the Atman, Brahman, spiritual life. So Shravana is very important because ultimately Shravana leads to Manana and Nididhyasana. Suppose we go on listening to a particular thing, that idea gets into the mind and the mind starts thinking about it. This thinking later on become, become a, becomes a con conviction. So once it becomes a conviction, it is reflected in action. That is the problem. If a wrong idea gets into the mind, it will result in wrong action in course of time. So Shravana is very important. That is why Vedanta says, Shravana manan and Didhyasana and the Mahavakyas or Vedanta Vakyas or Guru Vakya is necessary. Mashrausham, let me not listen to what? Shravya bandham tavacharitam apasya anyat akhyana jatam. I want to listen only to one thing, that which will capture my mind and heart. What is that? Your story is speaking to the Lord. The stories of the Lord's leelas the various divine plays as avatars in this world. Let me listen to them. The more I listen, the better for me. Except that anything else, it may be a good story, even concerning good people, I don't want to listen. Except what is directly related to God, I don't want to listen to anything else. Because any other, listening to any other idea can prove to be an obstacle in spiritual life where manana and nididhyasana should be only on the Atman, only on God. 
तव चरित अपास्य अन्यत अख्यान जातम एंड तव चरित इज श्राव्य बंधा लॉर्ड्स लीला और वर्ड्स कनेक्टेड विद द लॉर्ड्स लीला और सो स्वीट एंड सो नाइस दे कैन सिंपली कैप्चर द माइंड ऑफ कोर्स द माइंड हैज टू बी प्रिपेयर्ड फॉर दैट people who have prepared themselves who have made their minds and hearts pure through proper spiritual practices in their case this applies in narada bhakti sutra we have a very important sutra stri dhana nastika vairi charitram na shravaniyam one should not listen to any story connected with lust with greed with hatred and so on it applies to all men and women whatever rouses our inner passions our lust our anger our hatred we should not listen to them why if we listen to them attentively they get into the mind create samskaras or they rouse the old samskaras which may be in a potent form in the bhagavatam we get many shlokas which extol this great quality of listening to the lord's story the greatness of lord krishna's name is described here pravishta karna randhrena swanam bhavasaro ruham dhunoti shamalam krishna salilasya यथा शरत और शरद ऋतु इट कम्स आफ्टर द रेनी सीजन इन द रेनी सीजन द वाटर्स ऑफ ऑल द रिवर्स आर डर्टी मड्डी बट आफ्टर द रेनी सीजन वेन द शरद ऋतु कम्स द वाटर बिकम्स ऑटोमेटिकली क्लियर डस्ट डर्ट एंड देन मड सेटल्स डाउन वाटर बिकम्स वेरी क्लियर just like that when the name krishna the two lettered word krishna enters through our ears into our minds our hearts automatically it cleanses our minds and hearts even as the autumn season sharad ritu cleanses the waters of the rivers which have become dirty after the rainy season so according to this even sharavana of the lord's name is enough to purify our mind the more we listen to the lord's name the better for us the same bhagavatam towards the end samsara sindhu mati dustara mut तीर्षो नौन्य प्लव भगवत पुषोत्तम से लीलाकथारस निषेवणमंतरेण पुंसो भवेद दुखदवादित प्रैक्टिकली दी एंड ऑफ दी भागवत शुक महर्षि स्थली संसार सिंधु अति दुस्तर उत्तीर्षो हो देर इज ए साधक ए मुमुक्षु डिजायर ऑफ लिबरेशन ही वॉन्ट्स टू क्रॉस ओवर दि ओशन ऑफ संसार उत्तीर्षो हो वन हु हैज द स्ट्रॉंग डिजायर टू क्रॉस दि ओशन ऑफ संसार फॉर हिम देर मे बी मेनी मेथड्स many boats many rafts many ships but this is the best na anya plavaha bhagavatah purushottamasya leela katha rasa nishevanam antarena there is bhagavan purushottama mahavishnu here shri krishna as an avatara here leela avatara manusha avatara as a human being so much of divine play has been given to us by him what we have to do is just listen to that all the wonderful 
deeds he has done in this life. Leela Katha Rasa Nishevana. Leela Katha is all play for him. So many stories connected with the Lord Krishna. They are so sweet, Rasa, full of the sweet juice. Nishevanam, hearing, listening. Antarena, without that. That is, listening to the stories of the Lord is the best raft or boat or ship that takes you across the ocean of samsara. Now there is a, there is an adjective for that. Dila katha rasanishevanam mantarena. This is Purushottamas or Lord Krishna's stories. And that is, there is an adjective for that, vividha dukkha davarditasya. The person who wants to cross over the ocean of samsara, he has, he, he has been burnt as it were, as being burnt as it were, by the forest fire of samsara. Various types of dukkha he is undergoing in life. All these sorrows are, have created a lot of suffering in his life. So a person who is suffering from the fire of samsara, for him there is no other way except taking to the name of the Lord, listening to the name of the Lord, repeating the name of the Lord. Then we come back a little. In the eleventh skandha we have the Uddhava Gita. Taye Shrinvanti Gayanti Hyanumudanti Chadrataha Matparashraddhanascha Bhaktim Vindanti Te Mai. So this gives us a hint. We want to develop devotion. We don't have it. We are fully conscious of our defect, our deficiency. Yes, I have faith in the Lord. I want to love Him. I want to develop devotion. But I do not know how. Here the Lord is telling Uddhava, Ta e shrinvanti gayanti hi anumodanti cha adrta hamat parahashraddhadanascha Bhaktim vindanti te mahi. They obtain or attain devotion towards me. Who are they? If they can manage to listen to the stories of the Lord, if they can manage to sing the names and the glories and the stories of the Lord, or when somebody is singing, they say, yes, good, fine, nice, anumodanti. Adrutaha, matparaha, and then these people, because they have taken to this type of bhakti, practicing bhakti, they are looked upon by others with love, with devotion, with good feeling. Matparaha, they are devoted only to me. Shraddha dhanaha, they have got plenty of faith in me. Such people. So those people who are devoted to me, who have faith in me, who are listening to the names and the glories of the Lord, or who are singing the names and the glories of the Lord, or when somebody else is doing it, who are actually accepting it, supporting it, appreciating it, such people will automatically get devotion. So even if you don't have devotion, genuine love and devotion in our heart for the Lord, the best and easiest method is by repeating the name of the Lord, listening to the names and the glories of the Lord. The same Bhagavatam in the sixth skandha goes to the extent of telling us that even if you take the name of the Lord, just by accident or out of fun, it will have its effect. Sanketyam parihasyam vastobham helanam evava vaikunthanam agrahanam agha sheshagaharam viduhu asheshagaharam viduhu Yes, symbolically a, a person may take to the name of the Lord. 
the Purohit says, do like this, he does. Many times we have a saying in Kannada, Shastra Koskara Madhraita. So you need not take it very seriously. Because the Shastra says it should be done, it should be done. If it is not done, the karma may not be complete and you may not get the result you want. So Sankhetya or Parihasya, sometimes one may even make fun taking the name of the Lord. Oh, 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 that fellow Krishna, you know who he is. So he has repeated the word Krishna out of fun. Stobham helana me bhava. Sometimes it may be for a very short time. But even then, if the Lord, Lord's name, Lord is called as Vaikuntha here, one who has no defects in him, that is the meaning of the word. If anybody takes the Lord's name, even symbolically or even out of fun, it will completely destroy all the sin in the minds and mind and heart of the person who repeats it. The famous example given in our Puranas is Ajamila. He was about to die. So the Yamadutas had come, messengers of the Lord of Death. He was terribly afraid. He called his son Narayana. He was not interested in the Narayana in Vaikuntha. Immediately because he repeated the name Narayana and the Lord Vishnu sent his Dutas, Vishnu, Vishnu Dutas to save him and so on. So this is actually a symbolical story which tells us how powerful the Lord's name is. Actually according to the story, there is a conversation between the Yamadutas and Vishnu Dutas. Finally Vishnu Dutas convinced the Yamadutas of the great power inherent in the name of the Lord. So the Yamadutas go away and Ajamila survives. Then he repents for all the sins he had committed in his life, gives up his family, hearth and home, goes to the bank of the Ganges River, builds an ashrama there, does tapas and gets moksha. Very often our Harikatha Bhagavatar say, he immediately got mukti. No, that is not the story, it is not very correct. That was a turning point in his life. Later on he got it through sadhana. Then, Mas Marsham, let me not remember, let me not bring it into my mind. What is that? Tvam Chetasa Apanhuvanan. There are people who deny your existence. There are people who abuse you. They don't accept your existence, they deny it, they may even abuse you like the Asuras in the Puranas. So, even if such people abuse you or deny you in their minds, they may not do it openly by word of mouth. Even then, I don't want to remember them. I don't want to remember those evil, sinful people who deny your existence even in their mind. Mas Marsham Tvam Chetasa Apanhu Vanan. In other words, they are Nastikas, people who have no faith in God and the higher values of life. Vairi Charitram Nashravuniyam, Nastika Dhana Vairi Charitram Nashravuniyam. So Narada is very particular to put the word Nastika also. Sri Ramakrishna says, do not read too many books, especially books connected with too much philosophy, brain twisters as they call, and especially books of atheistic philosophers. The intellect may be so strong that a person may be able to prove that black is white and white is black. But it will create only confusion in your mind and disturb your faith, therefore don't read those things. Let us remember that human life is too short to be wasted. You cannot make experiments with that. For thousands of years great rishis have done all that. They have realized the truth, they have shown us the path and let us 
walk in the beaten path and make our lives blessed. What will happen if we remember the people who are atheists, agnostics, nasticas? So when we meditate upon them as it were, remember them, their tendencies can come into us. One of our Swamiji, Swami Nishri Sanji, he has come here also and given a talk about seven, eight years back. He used to tell us when we were brahmacharians, thought is a suction and not a projection. Whenever you think a thought, you are actually drawing something into your own mind, into your personality. It's not that you are throwing it out. So every thought that we think can go deeper and deeper into the mind, strengthen our samskaras, either good or bad. So if we think of the agnostics and the atheists and their nature, their thought, their thought patterns can get into our mind and shake the foundations of our spiritual life. Madhava, Bhuvanapate, he is praying to the Lord. Now, who is Madhava, husband of Lakshmi? Lakshmi is the Divine Mother, the very personification of not only beauty and wealth, but also daya or compassion or grace. So, he is telling the Lord, you are not Vishnu, you are the husband of Lakshmi. So your greatness comes not because of yourself, but because of Lakshmi. And who is Lakshmi? Grace personified. Grace towards the Jivatmas is one of the most natural, essential qualities of the Divine Mother. So he is reminding the Lord that he is the husband of the Divine Mother, Mother of Grace. Bhadhava Bhuvanapate. And secondly, you are the Lord of the three worlds. And I am in your kingdom, I am a subject of your kingdom, a child of yours. So, there is nothing that is impossible for you. And when your own children, when your own subjects approach you for something, you must give. Now, these are all negative virtues, so to say. Let me not look at the face of those people, let me not listen to this, let me not do this and do that. But what is it that you want to do? What is the positive disi discipline you want to have in your life? Janma janmantare api tat saparya vyatikar rahidaha ma bhuvam ma bhuvam Let me not become. Let me not become what? Janma janmantare api tat saparya vyatikar rahidaha Saparya means worship, puja. Now this worship includes so many things. So even whether in this life or in future lives, let me not be denied the opportunity of worshipping you. That is more important. So this worship includes so many things. Say for instance seeing, seeing the image of the Lord or seeing the form of the Lord in one's own heart in meditation, then listening to the names and the glories of the Lord, singing the names and the glories of the Lord, talking about the Lord to, with other devotees, remembering the Lord, whatever he says, let me not do this, let me not do that, these are all the positive aspects of those disciplines. So in this life, and also in future lives, let my life be never without thy worship. Let me not be denied the opportunity of worshipping your holy lotus feet. Your puja in this life and also in the future lives. Now puja, ritualistic worship, can give rise to bhakti and shraddha. Again, only if there is bhakti and shraddha, you do ritualistic worship. The two are interconnected somewhere. We have to begin. Very often people may begin with ritualistic worship as a matter of routine. 
a boy is given the Gayatri mantra, Sandhyamadana, you have to do this, do it this way. He may not have much faith in that. But he, if he believes the words of the Shastras and the elders, it is ultimately for my good. He starts with a little faith and practices it seriously and sincerely. Gradually devotion can come, faith can come. So one should not wait to start the spiritual practices or disciplines until one gets faith. So, a word from the elders is enough. After all, nothing can be started from the very beginning in life. Suppose I want to study physics, there is a standard textbook, there is a teacher to teach me. In the beginning itself, if I start telling, does the teacher know? Is this book all right? Then how can I learn? So, the starting point itself, we need help, faith. Here also the same thing. Let us start the worship with faith and that worship gradually increases our faith in the Lord. Now, puja results in bhakti and bhakti makes puja more interesting and in this we get ananda, gradually sattvic type of pleasure and peace come. So once I am able to get that sattvic type of pleasure and joy and peace, I don't mind any number of births, he says. This is more important. Ananda is more important than moksha. In fact, the philosophy of bhakti, according to the Bhagavatamis, it is called as Panchama Purushartha. Moksha is the fourth. They don't want moksha. They want intense love of God, parabhakti. Enjoying the devotion of the Lord in every life, that is the goal of their life. I remember one interesting incident. The long back, some psychologists made experiments on rats. So they caught hold of a little rat and then put some electrode into its one particular point in the brain and then the connection was also given and there was one button there. So accidentally the rat came and then pressed the button and it had a sensation here Though it was a mild shock in the beginning, after a couple of seconds it started feeling some pleasurable feeling was there. So after going back it again came and pressed the button a second time. It went back, again it came. So it is something like that. We perform all these spiritual disciplines. It may appear to be a little difficult, but we enjoy peace and then bliss then all right, let me try it again. Something like that. So I don't mind being born again and again if I can get this joy of loving the Lord and the response from the Lord. So the negative side and the positive side both are mentioned here. Now we go to the next shloka, 16th. Jihve Kirtaya Keshavam Muraripum Cheto Bhaja Shridharam Ponidvanda Samarchayachuta Kathaha Shrotra Dvayatvam Shrunu Krishnam Lokaya Lochana Dvaya Harir Gachang Riyugmalayam Jigragrana Mukunda Pada Tulasim Murdhanamadhokshajam. He jihve keshavam kirtaya chetaha chetaha mururipum bhaja panidvandva shridharam samarchaya shrotradvaya tom achutakathaha shrunu lochanadvaya krishnam lokaya angriyugma Arehi alayam gacha grana mukunda pada tulusim jigra murdhan adhokshajam nama. In other words, every act of ours 
should be directed towards the Lord. This idea is very common. Similar shlokas we get in the Bhagavatam and also in other scriptures. In that wonderful work Viveku Chudamani, Bhagavan Shankara almost in the very beginning has given this shloka Durlabham Trayami Vaitat Daivanugraha Hetukam Manushyatvam Mumukshutvam Mahapurusha Samshrayaha These three are very difficult to get in life. Daiva Anugraha Hetukam we can interpret this in from two different standpoints. If God's grace is there, then only we get these three. Or, if we get these three, then we, it is easy to get God's grace. Both ways it is possible. First is Manushyatva, to be born as a human being. Second is Mumukshutva, the desire for moksha, liberation. Then third, refuge at the feet of great people. Human life is considered to be extraordinary and extremely important. In fact, according to the calculations given in our Puranas, before we get the human birth, we pass through 84 lakhs of subhuman births probably starting as a worm as a, or as an amoeba. We, after undergoing 84 lakhs of births, we come to the human level. So that it shall shows how difficult it is to be born as a human being. But all people who are born as human beings are not spiritually fit for taking to the higher life. They have no idea of spiritual life. They have no inclination for this. Manushya rupena mrugascharanti. This is how the great poet Bhartra Hari says, there are people who appear like human beings, but they are worse than animals. So for a human being to get mumukshutva, spiritual inclination, the desire for liberation that is extremely difficult. Manushyanam sahasreshu kaschidyatatisiddhaye as Krishna says in the Gita. Yes, I have got a little spiritual awakening. I want to get moksha. That is all right. But where are the people to guide you, to direct you in the right path? Very difficult to get the Mahapurushas because Mahapurushas never advertise themselves, as Narada Bhakti Sutra says. They hide themselves. They look like very ordinary people. Sometimes they may even appear to take to abominable ways of life to keep the people away. In Swamiji's life we get an incident. When Swamiji was moving as a Parivrazaka in the Himalayas, Somebody told him, here is a cave, there is one uh, sadhu there who catches hold of human beings, kills them and eats them up. Swamiji was amused. He wanted to see what kind of sadhu he was. Then he went there, met him, he was such a nice man, talked to him, spent a little time, and then he asked him, why have you put the bones of the human being, the human frame, and the outside, skeleton, parts of a skeleton. Then he said, you know, these people, they come and pester me for Siddhis and or want me to use the Siddhis for their selfish purposes. I want to get rid of that nuisance. So all this drama, that's all. So many, many times these great people hide themselves behind apparently uh, what is called inhuman or other types of uh, means and methods. But when they find that a particular person is seriously interested in spiritual life, they themselves come out and show their grace. They can even call them, pick them up and then even force them to take to the spiritual life. 
the rare instances where the shishya was not interested in diksha, but the gurus have forced them to take diksha. And later on in their life, they have realized how lucky they were. Because the guru could see there is a tremendous potentiality for spiritual life, but just now it is covered by a layer of ignorance. Therefore, even by, it is something like giving a bitter medicine to a baby, even forcing it into its mouth. Like that things have happened. So, Mahapurusha Samsharya is the third step and it is very important. If a person can get all these three, we can say 80% of the journey is over. Only 20% is, <coughs> is left. We have similar shlokas in the Bhagavatam. Now we have the story of the Nalakubara Mani Griva, two Gandharvas who had been born as two trees in Vrindavana. So our little Krishna was making mischief. Then Mother Yashoda tried him with a rope to the stone martyr, Varulkallu and then went away. She thought that the stone mark is quite heavy, he is a little baby, he will not be able to get out of that. But he dragged the stone marker with him and went in between the trees and dragged it with such force that both the trees were broken, fell down and from inside Nalakubra and Manigriva appeared they bow down to the Lord and pray to Him. There is a beautiful hymn or stotra in the Bhagavatam by them. This is one shloka taken from that. Very famous, very often we chant it. Vani gunanu kathane shravanau kathayam hastaucha karma sumanas tavapada yurnaha smrityam shirast Tava Nivasa Jagat Pranami Drishti Satam Darshanis to Bhavatta Noonam. The Lord has given us Jnanendriyas and Karmendriyas. Now all these Indriyas should be directed towards Him. Vani Gunanu Kathani. So let this be our condition. The first is Vani, our speech. Let our speech be engaged in reciting your great qualities, Guna Anukathana. We have the two ears, Shravanam Kathayam. So let our ears listen to your stories. Hasta Ucha Karmasu. Let our two hands be engaged in work connected with you directly. It may be worship, it may be serving others, it may be working in the temple and so on. Manaha tava padayoho naha smrityam. Our mind should be engaged constantly and continuously in remembering, remembering your holy feet. The only business of mind is thinking. Instead of thinking of rotten things, bad things, let it think of your holy lotus feet. Smrityam, padayohanaha smrityam, shiraha tava nivasa jagat praname. It's a beautiful idea. So my head should bow down in all humility. Bow down to whom? This jagat, this world. In every bit of this world you are there as the antaryami, as we say in Kannada, Anu, Renu, Trina, Karshta, the Lord is in every one of these. Since you are this Jagat, since you have become this Jagat, since this Jagat has come out of you, and since you are living inside it as the antaryami, after Tat Srishtva Tadeva Anupravishat, Taitri Upanishad says, after creating the world, the Lord entered into it. Therefore, let my head bow down to this world which is your place of dwelling. Drishtihi 
सताम दर्शनी अस्तु भवतनु नाम दृष्टि यू हैव गिवन मी आई साइट आई एम एबल टू सी व्हाट शुड आई सी आई शुड सी आई शुड लुक एट दी सत्पुरुषास द गुड वंस द ग्रेट वंस Why should I look at them? Because they are your body. See, inside the Satpurushas, the Lord is living. As I pointed out the other day, when Vidura came back to Hastinapura after his Tirthyatra and met Yudhishthira, who was the king at that time, and when Yudhishthira asked him where he had gone, Vidura said he had gone on pilgrimage, Tirthyatra, Then he dished a reply. Where is the need for people like you to go on a pilgrimage? Tirthi kurvanti tirthani swa antasthena gada bruta. People like you make holy people more holy because you are carrying the Lord in your heart. So these sat purushas, the holy people. They are carrying the Lord in their hearts, so they are actually the body, the Lord is the soul. So let my eyes look at them. By looking at these great people, the holy people, it is as good as seeing you. So this is how Nalaku Bara and Mani Griva have prayed to the Lord, and the ideas are practically the same in both the shlokas. In the Bhagavatam again. In the tenth skanda, the gopis are praying to the Lord. Tenth skanda is the most picturesque and the most beautiful of all the skandhas. Seventh and the tenth. Seventh we get the story of Prakladha, and tenth the Lord is story of Lord Krishna. So the gopis are praying to the Lord. They know who Lord Krishna is. So, in the process of praising them, they have used these shlokas also, these ideas also. Sava gaya tasya gunan grunite karau chetat karma karau manascha smare dvasantam sthira jangamishu shrunoti tat punya kathasa karnaha शिस्तु तस्ो भयलिंगमी तदेव यश्यति तिचक्षु अंगा विष्णुरथ तज्जना पादोदक्या भजती निम दि फेमस् श्लोक विच इज प्रिंटेड इन दि वेरी फस्ट पेज ऑफ दि गास्पल श्रीराम कृष्ण तव कथात जीवन कविभरीड़ कलमशापहम श्रवण मंगल श्रीमदात भुवि गृणंती भूरी दीज एक्सप्लेनेशन सदी श्लोका सिंधी नेक्स्ट क्लास